it bothered me. And when I found out that why it bothered me didn't make any sense and was limiting for no purpose, I cast it aside and said, be honest with yourself, be honest with your characters, and if I was going to be okay with the violence, then what did it say about me as a person that I wasn't okay with the sex? So guess what? I got okay. <laughs> I, yeah. What little inhibitions I had were gone years ago, at least on paper. Okay. Hi, my name is Ida. Hi, Ida. Hi. Um, first of all, I love your outfit. It's like so retro. Thank you. And your husband's. It's amazing. <laughs> there you go, pose for us. But um, I first started your books um, in the middle of the series, around the Killing Dance, and I worked my way up because it was back then and I was thinking, oh, there's still the text thing. There wasn't text, it was like a page thing. I'm like, okay, okay. So I just passed that and I feel really connected to, your, to Anita because she's, nowadays, she's the strong, independent woman that every, every woman here hopes wants to be and they try to be. So I just wanna know, when you're writing these and you're thinking of who Anita likes more between Jean-Claude or Richard, who would you like more that you think resembles your husband? <laughs> so we, have a, we have a deal that when people ask, who am I in the books, I get to answer. <laughs> Remember um, Blue Moon? The farmer who owns the, the land, <laughs> who's dead off stage before the book begins? Remember his name? That would be me. In, interesting, in, in, interesting aside to that is that I did not realize, I just wanted a, a common name that didn't stand out for the guy that was dead off stage. And I didn't remember I'd used John's name. We'd been friends for years, but I honestly did not remember that that's the name I'd chosen at the end, because I'd changed it several times. And John had read the book and didn't catch his name in there. So other friends told him he was, his name was in there, and other friends came up and said, oh, you used John's name. I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> and he said, no, I wasn't. No, it wasn't my name. They pointed out to both of us that we were both wrong. <laughs> And all I can say is my subconscious was ahead of me. Because um, at that time, I was still with my first husband. Yeah. And John was just a friend. Yeah. Uh, we tried not to date for years. <laughs> well, we did. We did, I swear. We went through like a year where everywhere we went, if I went to the mall, he was there. If I went to wherever, we were there. And we were just ahead of each other. And we, we could not avoid each other. The universe just went, come on, come on, get a clue. <laughs> and then after, after over a decade of marriage, I found myself single and dating again for the first time in over a decade. That was a treat. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of fun. But not in the way most people assume. It was fun because I went, wow, they're just as stupid as when I tried to date them in college. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just skip it this time. Um, most people never got to a date because they couldn't get through the initial conversation. They were either stupid, cruel, sexist, or assumed because I was freshly divorced that I'd want to have sex with them on the first date. I actually told one gentleman, and I use that term loosely, as long as you understand that the price of dinner is not the price of my virtue. He didn't understand what I'd said. <laughs> No date for you. <laughs> and uh, John and I were actually friends for eight years before we ever tried to, to date. And now we are about to celebrate, uh, ten, we are celebrating 10 years as a couple. <laughs> what can I say? I'm, I'm, I'm terribly into long term. Okay. Yes. My name is Angela. I read 18 of the Anita books in three and a half months. They're so good. I want to know how did you come up with the character of Nathaniel and where can I meet Jason in real life? Um, 
the character of Nathaniel is actually one of the few people that is based on a real person loosely, not physically. He does not look like that. I never got to meet him. But Nathaniel was his name. When I started researching the BDSM community, I found it was so not what I expected, first of all. And if I had not done my research, I'd have written it wrong like everybody else does. And movies are worse. So um, I found that uh, Nathaniel was one of those that, that is so into pain he has no stop. I, I, met, I met a handful of people that really have no stop. They will not say no. They are that into pain. They have no stop to the point where if they do not have a good dominant, they can get really badly hurt. They're rare, but I've met them. Nathaniel had disappeared, and his, he'd lost his dominant, which had been his boyfriend, and he tried to find other people to take care of him, but he kept choosing straight guys, and he didn't like women. Well, you're only going to keep him so long if you don't, if that's not your flavor. And he finally just disappeared. No one ever heard of him again. He probably did not make it. So what you can't do in real life, I did in fiction. I saved him. And you're welcome. You're welcome. I, sometimes I'll come upon a story and it just touches me and I can't fix it in real life, but I'll fix it on paper. That's one of the things I like about fiction. So that's why Nathaniel exists and that's probably why he's persisted and become so important in Anita's life. Much to her chagrin and mine and uh, me protesting all the way. Uh, now we wouldn't know what to do without him. And he's total fantasy. I mean, I mean, he really is, of all of them, that is, he does housework, he shops, he is gorgeous, he hits the gym, he is, uh, he's, yes, uh, he, you know, he's got the longest hair of anybody in the, in the books, um, and also, uh, his day job is a stripper, and he, he's, he's sensitive, he's, he's into, I mean, there's, there's some, and he's not perfect, but, but damn, it's close. <laughs> And, and people are always wanting me to pick one of the, the big macho guys. I'm going, oh, no, they won't vacuum. <laughs> I'm a working woman. It's sexy if you'll cook. <laughs> Damn straight. One of the first dates we had is he fixed me dinner in his apartment. <laughs> the whole wearing no shirt with an a just an apron was a help. No, he's an only child, I'm afraid to say. Sorry. All right. I have been reading your books now for over 10 years. You're awesome. I've seen you Thank down you. in St. Louis and up here multiple times. I want to know, though, where you wrote Anita for so many years before Mary came up. Where did Mary come up and why? Well, Mary exists because I'd written five Anita books in a row as fast as I could. And... I had a dream one night. No, it wasn't sparkly vampires. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I, I apologize for that one. Um, and in the dream, I was me, but I was playing Anita. And I knew that. And I had the gun and, and everything. And Edward was with me. And we 